I can't control if it was pick sixes. I can't control if it was scoops and scores. I can't control any of those. Um, moving on, like I said, the call in number Truth should be, told, be on the though, screen. Though a score is a score, so it doesn't matter if it's a pick six, fumbled. Right, exactly. Whatever. Your I mean, team gave that up. Yeah. Either way, you are charged those points when it comes exactly. to the Exactly. So I, I need everyone to, to lay off on that one. So give us a call. What we got tonight. Keep it quick. Hey, and if you're having trouble hearing us, if you're having trouble, if, if something's coming through, we're always trying to work to improve. I always lay a little low, a little early in the show, try to keep it slow just to see if there is any tech issues, see if there is any trouble with our callers. But we're going to dive right in. Per use to the MSFA, got a couple of great – Nah, I wouldn't go great games. We got a couple games on the schedule this week. A couple. Uh, let's start with the number one. We got uh, the new number one, River City Hurricanes, traveling to take on the number eight Northern Kentucky Colts. Um, it's not going to be close. I got into a, a discussion, a, a nice, friendly discussion with a Colts player yesterday, and he said they, they were going to win this week. He didn't come out and say it directly, but they were close. He, he said, we're going to win. And then he said, don't be surprised what we do this week. Dude, you're playing one of the top defenses in the BC and the, the, the MSFA. Your team struggles to score. Your quarterback broke his leg. Half your team bounced to other Cincinnati local area teams. And you were getting stoned before. So here you come. It is a home game, but you're hosting a number one defense. So now you're going to have to find a ways to score. I don't think you can do. You're allowing 30 to 60 points every rip this season. So you're not going to stop the Canes. So I'm sorry, Colts. Your win's not coming this week. And unless there's a forfeit on the season that I – or not Canes, I'm Colts. Uh, I'm sorry if I said the Canes. The Colts, your win's not coming this week. You're not, you're, you're, you're not going to get a win this season on the field. The Colts, I'm sorry. And it is, I would be surprised if you scored on the Canes. The Canes play that aggressive style. They're, they're blitzing. They're, they're bringing them from everywhere. You're not going to be able to get the ball off. The Canes are going to win this one by a lot. Um, and we got, we got somebody on the phone? Yeah, speaking of the Canes, we got Mr. Joe Elder on the, on, on the line with us tonight. Birdman Joe, what's up? Hey, what's up, man? I'm uh, pretty good. Real quick before we go, hey guys, Joe Elder's on the line. Let us know how well you can hear him. What's on your mind tonight, Joe? I, I can hear you guys a little bit. That sounds like so far that uh, the audio is good. So it looks like it's gonna be a good week. Ready to roll. I, I am hoping. I'm hoping. Give me a score on that Colts game. Score on the Colts game. Yep. Fifty-two to zero. Oh, I love it. I love it. I, I believe it, too. I believe that uh, the Colts are going to get rocked. I just don't think they have the numbers. Um, it, it, are, are you going to score any touchdowns, Joe? <laughs> uh, I, I can tell you this. Uh, I am now motivated, too. That's for sure. Well, and what motivated so you? I'm motivated um, to get a couple scores, and I want to pick up one because it's been a year since I scored. So well, you got that. I'm due. You got that number one next to your name. Um, looks like, hold on, hold on real quick, Joe. It looks like they're having some trouble hearing him. All right, well, we're trying to uh, get every. – I'm getting some feedback, Joe, that we're having trouble hearing you. Um, for those who couldn't hear, Joe said that he expects to win. Did you say 52 to nothing? Yeah, I don't know if it's on my end or your end. It's getting a little bit of feedback. It must be me. Well, I – <laughs> well, we, we've had this trouble. It's something we've been working on. Um, but, Joe, uh, we appreciate you getting in. We're going to keep working on it. But, Joe, for those who couldn't hear Joe Elder, Joe Elder said the Canes was going to win 52 to nothing, and him or one of his D-line partners was going to get a touchdown against the Colts. Yep, that is correct. All right, Joe. Well, I thank you for giving us a call. We're going to move on. And, uh, okay, keep me informed if we're having trouble hearing, guys. Thank you. And uh, just to pile on to that Colts guy, the Canes haven't played in, what, two weeks? Oh, they're hungry. They're they're very hungry. I could see them putting up 52 in the first half. I mean, and and they try to call out the dogs, and, and the second string puts up another 30 points on them. Now, I, I don't know about that because I don't know if they have that on offense. Um, 
but I, I do see them being able to score at least late in the se- in the second quarter and the rest of the second half because they're just they're just going to be physical. They're going to out they're going to out want you. They got that new number one next to their name. They've been wanting to be number one in the MSFA for quite a while. Um, I, they they're finally it. I don't think they're going to relinquish it at least this early in the season. Oh, no. So. I'm going to go. I'm going to echo what Joe said. For those who couldn't hear, Joe said he's going to win 52 to nothing over the Colts. I'm going to hold him to that. And just to answer a few uh, questions in the comments, Tara, I believe the Kings have played two games, right? They played the Titans and they played the Cavs. They played the Titans. Yes. Yeah. So they are technically two and zero standing at this point. So just to answer that question in the comment section there. All right. All right let me know. Um, you know, my phone ain't going to have the battery to last. I never charge it, never gets above 20%. Let me know what you see going on in there, what I need to be dressing. Uh, let's go on to number two team, the the Titan Up, the Titan Movement, as they've been calling it. They upset their rival. I called it. You're welcome. Titans over Spartans. Spartans struggled with not having a quarterback. Titans took advantage of it, um, ran the ball, scored. I believe the final score was 20 to 9. 29 sounds about right. Yeah, I think that's all right. right. Um, now, I want to know something. Titans or, or MSFA or whatever you know, if you know any information, are the Tri-State Titans going to the south? I heard they may be. I heard they may not be. I think it will be a huge move for the league because I think that's what they're trying to set up. They're trying to set up Titans Spartans or Titans Canes. No offense to the Airborne, but the Airborne just hasn't shown the league enough that that's what they want to see in the championship. If if the Airborne are the championship of the, of the teams in the South, your championship game is going to come from the North. So the Titans, though, they, they, they're on this defense. They tell me they got the best defense in the league. I don't know. I heard that the, the Spartans failed to kick some field goals. They, they failed to or take advantage of some opportunities that could have potentially changed the game. But I don't know. The Titans get the week off. They, they're going to get an automatic win against the Rampage. So hopefully they don't lose momentum. But right now, they're firm at that number two spot. I think after this week, they're going to get the chance at the Spartans again. No Evan Harvey once again. They're going to sit there because they're not going to have a really an opportunity to pass the Hurricanes. I still don't see anything spectacular with the Titans offense. Titans defense is uh, bend, don't break at times. But still, I still don't see them being a championship contender. I'm, I'm sorry, Titans fans. I think you won your Super Bowl last Saturday. I think and, against and I the really Spartans. feel the Titans' the only way they should be able to jump into first place is if they beat the Hurricanes head to head, which they do have a chance later in the year. Is that correct? They they come down um, here to play them again. That that MFSA schedule, the, the copy that I got is fairly accurate, but there's still some misses. So I'm not 100 percent sure. However, I I don't see that happening. I don't see the Titans no, no, being able to score on that Canes defense. I don't see the Titans beating the Spartans again. Like I said, last week was that Super Bowl. Home game, on the turf, no Evan Harvey. Yep. The the Spartans was reeling from everything that went on during quote-unquote Cane Gate. The Titans sitting back waiting for an opportunity to pounce, and, and they took advantage of it. 100%. So, sorry, Titans. You're number two. Enjoy it. You're going to beat up on a, a rampage. I don't know what the MSFA gives you. I don't think give you two points, six points, 21 points. I've heard. Um, do we got a caller? Yeah. Uh, let's uh, switch gears a little bit. Let's jump over to the PA, PAFL. Oh, they're wanting us to jump out of our uh, our comfort <laughs> zone. Who we got? We got, uh, I believe it was Blue from the Columbia's Fire. So he should be on right now. All right. Hey, how we doing? Blue, are you there? Mike may hang up on him. Hey, I'm telling you guys, I don't do nothing with the phone. This is the only <laughs> phone I got. If you get through, it's my man Mike over here. He likes to screen the calls. All right. Are you are you able to hear us? Can you hear us, Blue? All right. Go ahead and uh, say hey. What's up? Hello. Hey, what's going on, man? Ah, he's breaking my heart. We're gonna have to get him back in here some other time. All right, well, we're going to move back on. We're going back to the MSFA until we can get him through. Uh, moving on from the Titans, we got number three, the Kentucky Spartans, back at it after a loss. Now, the Kentucky Spartans, their kicker wanted me to talk kickers. I've talked, I've talked the importance of kickers since the first ever show. 
If you have a kicker, if you have a quarterback in semi-pro, you're going to be head and shoulders ahead of anyone else. Problem is, you got to use him. I had a source, and I don't know how true it was. I wasn't at the game. I didn't watch the game. But I heard the Spartans was in field goal range, in the red zone, in the 10-yard line, four times, kicked it once. Now, midway through the third quarter, I heard the game was 12-3. to Let me tell you the difference that makes. 12-3 to against a defense like the Titans, not having your quarterback. You have no Evan Harvey. You're not able to get anything going. Your backup's struggling. Let me tell you how important a field goal kicker would have been. Say they score, say you get down there and you score, it's 3 nothing. Titans go ahead and score, it's 6-3. Field goal gets, you get another field goal, it's 6-6. You get another field goal, it's 9-6. They score again, it's 12-9. You get another field goal, you take advantage of all four of your field goals, it's 12-12. I heard there was a lot of hype. I've seen the film, there was a lot of hard hits by the, by the Titans. The Titans was bringing that heat. They wanted that win. I told you, that's their championship. So now you're down 12-3. That's a two-score game. And a defense that's hungry, hype, and happy. Now imagine it's 12-12. New ball game. The Titans like to run the ball. Titans can't throw the ball. I'll say, I'll say that all day. When they're up 12-3, third quarter, run the clock. Run oh, the ball. 100%, yeah. It's 12-12. You can't do that. 12-12, you got to put the ball in the air. You put the ball in the air with no quarterback, you're making a mistake. You make a mistake, you get a pick six, it's a wrap. It's game over. The Spartans still made plays. She was able to cut it in. You got if you if you got a kicker, you got to use him, especially on the ten yard line. If you're on the forty and and, and and you didn't get a chance to practice it, you ain't you ain't comfortable with your holder. I get that, but you're on the ten, you're on the fifteen, you're on the eight. I've met this cow kid. He's he's good. He's knocking out extra points. Evidently, that's about where you were. You want to win games. You want to win a championship. You want to get over the hump that the Comets and the Bulldogs took from you the last two seasons. You got to use your field goal. You got to use your field goal kicker, especially in the upcoming weeks. You don't have Evan Harvey. You don't have Matthew Douglas. It's going to be tough. But they do have Michael Scott. I'm talking about Spartans. Spartans don't have oh, Scott. I'm sorry. Scott would be offended if you heard you say that. Buddy, buddy is on the line, so hopefully he, he is offended a little bit. Mike's on the Scott on the phone? Yep. What, Mike, what's going on? Are you offended? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I would be too, man. How you doing? I'm good. How about yourself? I ain't doing nothing. Just smoking. Ah, well, that's, the cops are on their way. <laughs> what you doing? I'm just sitting here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm hearing you, man. You over talking about why don't we ain't no championship team? What's wrong with it? Where, where's I, I, I question your offense, my man. You, you, but you don't question the Spartans. They only put up six points with that little uh, quarterback they talked about so good. That little quarterback's going to be cozy on the bench by the time the playoffs get here. Oh, yeah. Once Evan gets back, it's Yeah, once Evan gets back, it's a wrap. And, like, that, that's my thing. Now, if, if Evan calls and he says, hey, I'm having a great time over here in Czech Republic, I'm not coming back, I'll change my complete tone. But you got you got to beat the Canes. First off, let me ask you a question. Are they moving you to the south? Nah, they, they would, but they, I guess they ain't there. There's so much flip-flopping going on, like, the beginning of the week, like, right after we beat them, they were talking about we going to the – to the little south or whatever. And then I guess uh, I made a little post asking what was going down. And then I guess he then switched it all up and was like, we just gonna stay. Because uh, basically what they were trying to do is, is since we was gonna have a forfeit, they were trying to just have a, have a game Saturday. And I don't know what happened, but somehow we just stayed where we was at. I think it's perfect. And like everybody else says, we should went to the south because it's easier. We don't want nothing easy. We, we want to take something because we got something to prove because everybody's talking about we ain't good the offense and this and that and the third, but I don't see not one offense that is just blowing blowing everybody else. You know what I mean? I, don't, I ain't seen one offense that's just good like that. There's not. Now, a couple of things. I want to see y'all go to the South, not because it's easier, not because it's that, not because it's, you know, uh, I, I want to see a good championship game. And I saw Airborne versus Spartans, and everyone says it was close. I was there. It wasn't. The Spartans are a young team, or the, the Airborne, I'm sorry, are a young team. They're not ready to win the championship. I want to see Spartans-Titans championship. I want to see Canes-Titans championship. I would love to see Canes-Spartans championship. I mean, I don't, you're not going to get that. So I was all for you guys moving to the south. Now, as far as offenses go, 
some of these teams, it's just going to be tough to get a quarterback. I'll be honest. But also, one thing that's killing a lot of these teams, it's bye week central around here. You play a game, you get a forfeit win, you get a bye week, it's a holiday. I, it's tough to get a rhythm going. And you know as well as I do, now you may get, the good teams may get some numbers, but most of these teams aren't practicing with more than 10 or 12 guys. So practice, you're not getting any rhythm. Then you play a game finally. Then you get a bye week. Then you get a four week or forfeit. And then it's Fourth of July. And then you got to travel. And then you get another bye week. Then you get, you know, the Canes may only play five games before the season's over. You can't get nothing going. Man, see, like that's what that's what's so crazy about it is, is like I don't see how we're in the same conference, but we don't play the Canes twice. And then it's just like, you know, I. I, I get, like, the airborne, you know what I mean? Like, they, they really didn't do much. But I feel like they didn't have all their people. Like, if they had that quarterback that played when we played them in the spring, I feel like it might have been different because, you know what I mean? Right. That, that's a whole different. I, that's the thing, too, Mike. I don't think he's there. I think he's uh, with uh, another team. Uh, well, yeah. Well, they ain't never going to be good because they ain't got no quarterback. Right. It just seems Everybody that plays, it's either they don't have who they have or, like, they got to travel far and not every person's going. So it's always, you know what I mean, something. But, I mean, I, I ain't seen no offense or heard no offense just, you know what I mean, putting up 40 like that or whatever. Like, everybody's defense is straight, but it just seems like everybody's offense ain't, ain't like that. So it's just like I don't see how people say that our offense is just this garbage. And it ain't that good. It's like when it comes crunch time, you know what I mean, it's, Shoot, anything can happen. No, you're right, but I just – it's one of those ones where if your defense can keep you in the game, they're okay. But if you get down two touchdowns, you guys are a running team. You are the semi-pro equivalent to a Georgia Tech. You run a, a mean running offense, but when it comes time to put the ball in the air, it, it, it gets a little – it gets a little washy for me. No, that's what I'm saying. You got to see, you got to quit traveling to these little teams that you like. You know what I mean? Like the hurricanes. And you got to come down here. Man, I'm going to get you. I'm going to send you some Titan tickets and come and check us out because we got Kobe out there. And I don't care what nobody say. We we are actually adapted to the air more because of what Kobe and, and guys like got to doing. Because it asked the Spartans. It wasn't we were just running. My guy God had two touchdowns pass receiving, and he was making guys look dumb. You know what I mean? So, and Kobe, that's one of the best receivers I've ever seen besides Brooks from the Spartans. You know what I yeah. mean? Number one from uh, the Spartans, Brooks. He's yeah, Terrence nice. Brooks. But Kobe, he's like Kobe Bryant. He, he's getting everything. You know what now, I mean? Now, so Mike. Just like we running with Eric and stuff because everybody knows that. Everybody's stacking the box on us, too. So, Eric really ain't doing that. And then, like, that's what's setting up that run, and that's exactly what happened Saturday. You know, they, once, once we started completing balls, they're like, dang, you know, they, they can actually throw this ball. So then when they worried about that, now we're running right up the middle. And plus yeah. that little defense, is, you know what I mean, it's straight, but they got tired. They cramped and they ain't even playing the second half, but they got the most to say. But about us talking about we garbage. We, maybe y'all need to get y'all's <laughs> cardio up, and then y'all can probably play a full good old game. But that ain't my fault that y'all can't go a whole game. You know what I mean? No, I get you, Mike. Now, I want to correct you on one thing. I don't go to teams that I like. I go to teams that don't make me travel. I go to the Canes game because I'm in Louisville. <laughs> it, Man, I, I'm, I stay in love and I'm traveling, traveling wherever the time go. So <laughs> I got a passenger to seat for you, so I don't want to hear no, no excuses. I'm even throwing a hamburger for you. I, I think uh, Shannon got that grill going. So so we're gonna get you a little hot dog, a little bag of chips. You go ahead and sit on down, and you watch a good old game. I mean, All right. Why wouldn't you want to come to the Spartans and Titans game again? You know what I mean? I, I may yeah. have to. I may have to come to that one next week. Or that that one definitely sounds like it's gonna it's gonna be a great one. Uh, Mike, I, I got to let you go. We got to get on. It, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, prove me wrong, man. Prove me wrong. You know I'm looking for it. Okay. All right, man. I, hey, I, I told everybody, I said, you get a minute. You get 60 seconds. But I got a soft spot for Mike. Mike comes in. He, he's great to have on the phone. He's, he's a heck of a football player. Uh, so he, he gets to have a little bit more. He gets to come in and have a couple minutes of time, especially when his team took down number one. And if you bring an intelligent conversation – Two here. Yeah, Mike, like, Mike's good times. Good times. We'll definitely give you a little bit more time, but if you All right, so, here, lose and lose focus. So diving back in, we got the Spartans. We got number three Spartans. They are traveling to 
to here. They're traveling here. I'm sorry I got distracted. They're traveling here to take the Kentucky and a Calvary. Now, the Calvary are interesting. Calvary are 3-1. and one, Played two games. Won one game on the road. Or one actual game on the field against the Colts. And they won it easily. I knew they would. They're a young team. They're, they're a pretty deep team. They got, some, they got some special talent. But they're confident. Mike, they're confident. I'll tell you. They are excited with a capital E to play at Evan Harvey-less Spartans team. Which, who wouldn't be? Exactly. And I'll be honest with you. If they had Evan Harvey, I would say, watch out, watch out Cavs. Oh, This yeah. can get ugly. Fast. But they don't. And that quarterback, he likes to run. And the problem with running quarterbacks is a, a mobile quarterback who likes to run more than throw, you open yourself up for multiple opportunities to turn the ball over. You're scrambling, fumble, scoop and score, that's it. You throw a pick six, scoop and score, that's it. So the Cavs, I don't know, I don't see them having much to beat the Spartans. They have a nice little run game. I question their quarterback game as well. But that young, fiery defense of the Cavs got some struggles. But if they can make little buddy for the Spartans fumble, they can make him throw an interception. Look, I told you, I thought the Spartans was putting up 50 on the airborne. They benched, Har they benched Evan Harvey. They put in this backup. Backup didn't complete anything. He actually threw what could have been a pick six. Luckily, the offense, or I guess for the Spartans, the offense hocked him down. But that was a pick six. That was a game changer. This game was 20-6. to six. Now, they went on to score, but it took some time off, and it kind of killed that momentum. You score on a pick six, it's, it's a, that, that's everything. It, that's and, a good, that's, that game was already was game over, changer. in my opinion. That game was already over. Spartans, you can beat the Cavs by 30, 40, 50. You can lose by a couple of touchdowns if you're not careful. So run your little handoff, get, get, get the ball in the hand of that little running back. I think he's number two. Let him get some momentum. Throw some screens to, to um, number one, Brooks. Because you find yourself, the, the Cavalry are a young team that are going to do just like the Airborne did. If you get ahead of him, if, if you get ahead of the Cavalry, they're done. You get up 14 nothing, they're done. You get up 20 nothing, they're done. But you get down 12 nothing, you get down 14 nothing, you might see a different Cavalry team. And, and that's – it's a fall far from grace you start losing that game. If you not punch them in the mouth early and often, they are like that team that you don't want hanging hanging around till yeah. the third quarter. Because, because <clears throat> like, like, the, like the ball might bounce up, scoop up, and score, you know, and, and it's a totally different game. I mean, like it could be a 12-6 game heading into the fourth, into well, fourth quarter. No, I don't mean you this hit rude, the, but they're, they're young and dumb. Yeah, 100%. They, they don't know yet. So when they're losing, they don't know that they can come back. At the same token, when they're winning, they don't, they know, don't know you can come back. Yeah. So they're like they're they're going nuts. I'm telling you, Spartans, and and even if they the and and semi pro perception is reality. I say that once a week. The perception of losing to a team like the Calvary, if you're the Spartans, is unsurmountable. Your team will fall apart. I'll, I'll be the first to call it. But I, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say Spartans beat the Calvary by two touchdowns. Moving on, we got what I imagine is the game. It wasn't on the schedule, but based on teams, it looks like the Airborne are going to get a four-foot win against the Stallions. If that's incorrect, let me know. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, then we got five versus six. We got the Wolfpack versus the Tennessee Fury. Wolfpack, good defense, questionable offense. Fury, good offense, questionable defense. Defense. The old adage is defense wins championships. Defense is going to win this game. Tennessee's not going to be able to put up enough points or, or to really, or the Fury's not going to be able to get in there and score. All right, that's the uh, it for the MSFA. I want to dive into a couple things. I want to update my predictions. The championship game, I'm going. I'm changing it up. Change no, it. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. It's still going to be Spartans versus Airborne. As long as Evan Harvey's coming back, I'm, I'm riding that all the way until I see otherwise. Championship game for the MSFA. Uh, at least as of today, it'll probably change next week. We'll be Spartans versus Airborne. Got the Spartans winning it, being MSFA champions. We're going to dive into the BCFL. If they, if they do not decide to switch up that uh, 
like the South and North any. But. I don't think they are. Yeah. I, I think they tried it, but it's 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 going to be too confusing now because you built everything around what you have here. I, I don't see them making that change. <clears throat> they might. It might be wrong. I w- I'm all for it. If yeah. that's the case, it's Titans there. But it would definitely make a better championship game because as of right now, Spartans Airborne's over overrated. Airborne's in the championship. BCFL. Let's go over through the uh, the floaters. You got uh, the Gladiators coming. Well, okay, the Gladiators are going to get a win because they play the Kentucky Colonels. But let's talk about the Gladiators. Just for a second. Dude called me last week, and he said, we're going to win. He said, depth don't matter, experience don't matter, history doesn't matter, it's football, one leg at a time, pants on, pants on, whatever. Whatever he said. You go out, and I don't know what happened. They had a 30-7 to lead. I think that's right. The yeah, gladi- they're up by let me repeat that again. The Columbus Gladiators had a thirty to seven lead over the West Portsmouth Tanks. Their rival, the the proverbial hump, if you will, their Pistons to Chicago Bulls in the nineties, their Boston Celtics big three to the Cleveland Cavaliers. That was their hump to climb. And they had a 30 to 7 lead. It's it. Hang it up. The tanks, you're done. Go home. New gladiators in town. The Comets have lost all their players. The Crusaders, man, maybe they'll fall apart. But the gladiators are here to win a championship. 30 to 7 lead. Shut off the TV. It's a game. And I believe it was going into the fourth quarter, wasn't it? Or I, think, I think it was still first half. Oh, was it still first half? Okay. You look again, 37 30 tanks. Now, I, I don't. I'm going to tell you right now, I wasn't at the game. I watched a little bit of the live feed afterwards. Once it got 30 to 23, game's over. Once you're a team that's got your arch rival down by that much, and then you let that go, it's over. It's a wrap. Finish it. Hang them up. The Gladiators should have called it then. Still had the lead. They should have gave up. Right should have shut the lights off. They should have shut the lights off. You, got a, you still got a touchdown lead. Call it a day. <laughs> Next thing you know, it's 30-30. 37 to 30. I think they went on to win 50 something to 30. I don't know if the Gladiators scored again. Yeah, uh, I believe Shut it the score I saw was 56 36. Shut it was down. Total. I don't care what the Gladiators are going to do. The Gladiators, they're a good team, they're a decent organization. That's it. That's it. You can't come back from that. That was your chance. That was your chance to make 2018 your year. You choked it away. And they were at home. At home. You done beat them once. The division's yours. You win that game, the division's yours. A top two seed is on the line. Yep. Because if you you didn't know it at the time, but the Comets went on to lose. Right after that. The division's yours. The number two seed is yours. You got a smooth ride all the way to the championship game. It's yours. All you got to do is not choke it away. And you choke it away. Now, because I imagine due to some point reason, even if both teams went out because the Tanks beat the Gladiators by more than the Gladiators beat them, the, Gladi- the Tanks are going to win that division. That's on you, Gladiators. You sit here and you told me I should have had you over the Comets, and I probably should have because the Comets lost to everybody, that I should have had you the number two team running neck and neck with the Marion County Crusaders, and you choke it away. But the good news is you're going to get a win. You're going to get to beat the Colonels this week. Moving on, Colonel's still folded. Nothing new there. We got West Virginia Lightning taking on the West Portmouth Tanks. We'll dive into the Lightning for a little bit. I don't know what their deal is. Are they traveling? Do they have to travel? Do they get to travel? Are they supposed to travel? What's the deal? Are they going to take a forfeit? Is it over? Game? Well, uh, from what we heard last week, they can't make it to the playoffs. They can't make the playoffs Uh, unless something changes. And if anybody's changed, let us know. And to be honest, if – if I was playing on that team and I knew I couldn't make it well, to the what playoffs, are you doing? why don't I jump why are you wasting? And, and, and from yep. my understanding, there's other leagues. Now, the problem is you waited too long. A lot of these leagues are full. A lot of, a lot of these uh, dates are locking. You can't get in there now. You missed your opportunity. You're just flying along and life happened. So, if, they, if the game happens, it's going to be a lopsided victory. The tanks, I think the tanks tide has turned. Try saying that three times fast. They went, they, they took a loss early, and now they're back to the tanks. Job sword, solid quarterback, got that DN, Dion something, wrecking hey, havoc. We uh, lost speed real fast. So oh, we lost speed. Yeah. 
No! Uh, so, basically you're going to jump back into right when you were talking about the West Virginia Lightning team. Alright. Let me know when we're on. Uh, and it sucks because we got like 45 viewers. Oh, literally lost internet. So yeah, our internet's been shit lately. So I don't know what the fuck's going on with it. But as soon as it comes back up. Oh, man, if it's not one thing, it's another. Hey, do you have internet in the house? What? Are you watching TV? Stop working. Is it is it working now? Hello? Is it working now? I don't think so. Okay, this is pissing me off. The message on the TV is saying we're having trouble playing this title right now. That's fucking ridiculous. Alright. Thanks, babe. Yeah, per my computer, it's it's back on, so we'll go ahead and start it and see what happens. Oh, you going to try a new live? Yeah, well, I have to. All right, I just didn't know. All right, we're we're live. Oh, we're live! Hey, we're back. Maybe I don't know. Let me see. Gotta let the gotta let them build back up. We're doing good. I got too heated. Got too passionate over here talking about the glads choking, and uh, here we are. We lost. So let's let that, let's let everybody get back. Sorry, guys. Um, Thanks, Spectrum Internet. I know. Hey, I like Spectrum. Hey. Somebody didn't pay their bill. Don't have Spectrum in Salisbury. But we'll let everything get back up. My bad, guys. We lost service. But, hey, shout out to producer Mike over here uh, getting us back up and going as quick as possible. I guess I should have took a commercial break. Got too heated. The, the, the Gladiator's choke job got me all worked up. Didn't know how to handle it. My bad. Um, I don't know who we have. Like I said, we're trying to trying to get some of the viewers back up. Cause I saw some. I, I try to read the comments. So when I just a little hindsight of how this works, I'm over here talking, and I'm about three minutes in the future. It's still hot as can be out here. And I look down and I see what we're writing, and I see what you've posted, and I try to address it and try not to get too distracted. But it, it's tough sometimes, especially when with when you're co-hostless because you don't have someone to carry some of the conversation for you. Um, so. I was reading, and, and I, I get this every time. Mike, all I hear people want us to talk about, and I, I know it's their team, and it, nothing wrong with it, but they want us to talk about the Airborne, the Clarksville Airborne. The best team it. in the MSFA. I get it. You're a young team. You're new to this. You played in the spring. You're back in the summer. I, I, I don't know if we have any sound. Are we having any sound issues now? I seem to hear it just fine. All right. Let well, me check in. We'll, we'll keep going. Um, airborne. Young team. They want to be talked about. They want the uh, the fame and fortune, if you will. Uh, thanks, Tez, for, for letting me know that. Look, here's my thought on the Airborne. You're middle of the road. You're not the greatest... I don't need to talk about you all day, but you're not trash. You're not. You're not the Cleveland Browns. You're not the butt of the jokes. You are the Toronto Raptors. You're, yeah, you're the Toronto Raptors. You're the Buffalo Bills. You're, you're just these mid-level teams, and until you do more, I, I can't speak on it more. The only thing I can speak on is number seventeen on the defense. He's a monster. You're going to make it to the championship. That's the highest praise I can give you. But I don't know what else you want me to speak on. You're young. You got some speed. You, you struggle to score the ball. Your run game c comes and goes. You don't have a quarterback. The line is questionable. Apparently, I keep hearing great things about this special team. You missed a kick when I watched you play. I can't talk too much on that. And if so, you guys would like us to talk about you more, send us some film. 
Send us some stats. Send us something that we can call in. I, can they got a guy. Okay, I will give shout. I will give shout to a guy who says he has five interceptions, and that probably does lead the MSFA or close to it. I, I don't. I don't know. But props to him. But I can't talk all day about a run of the mill team because you're not good enough to be considered the championship contender, and you're not bottom feeders. So I can't pick on you. You're just there. And yes, you scored 35 points twice against struggling teams. The Bulldogs came through the town of Ten- the, the state of Tennessee and took everything. The Rampage are no good. The Rampage are no, no longer existent, but when they were here, they were they were no good. Yeah. The Fury are struggling. Do something. Get to the championship game. I'll give you a whole segment. I got you getting there. Win the championship and I'll talk about you more. Make it competitive and we'll talk about you. T. Ray, Canes could win the championship. I need to see more from that offense. Back to the BCFL. Lightning, you're done. I don't even make the playoffs. Somebody let us know, but they're done. The tanks, they turned it around. They hit the UE. They knew where they were, they, they were started in a bad direction. They turned it around. They're beating teams. They're beating them fairly easily. They got a great quarterback. They got quick receivers, and they got a good defensive line. The tanks are back. They can do two things. They can protect the passer, they can take the they can protect the passer, and they can rush the passer. That's a championship team. Now I don't know if they can get over the hump. I don't know if they can get over uh Marion County Crusaders, but they're gonna get a win, even if they are able to play the Lightning. That'll be an easy win. The battle for Cincy. Two middle of the road teams. Cincinnati Gators, Cincinnati Dukes. Cincinnati Gators. I love y'all's uniforms. They haven't really done much other than beat the Saints, though. You had off last week. Hope you enjoyed it. Cincinnati Dukes, trying to clap, broke hand, or yep, broke the pinky here. You beat the Comets, or beat people in Comet jerseys. I don't know how many were there from the actual Comets. Fold watch. But good job. You work. You got a good win. Six nothing. I, I put out some how many points you scored versus how many points you've allowed. Middle of the road in both. You're the airborne of the BCFL. Only problem is there's not as watered down conference. Dukes and Gators, I consider this a rivalry. I consider this Kentucky-Louisville of football. I consider this uh, Vanderbilt-Tennessee of basketball. Okay, I'll allow it. But Dukes beat Gators. Saints versus Comets. Saints, you got two back-to-back wins. Yay! Off a forfeit. (laughs) Now it's time to actually prove it. You're not going to prove it this week. I don't care how many players the Comets lost. They're still the Comets. They're going to win pretty easily. Hey, but... uh. I've heard the Saints have picked up some unknown hot commodity players. Granted, Who? Uh, exactly. Who? Who? This person will not put well, not, I, until put I see it. The until there's a name, but, until there's a face to it, until I know what's going on, the Saints are still going to be Saints. We've talked about you every week. You've done your job. You stayed alive. You let everything else around you crumble and fall. You lost the Piranhas. You lost the Colonels. You lost the Lightning. You're going to come in as a seventh seed. You're making the playoffs your first every year. Yeah. That's enough. That's it. That's what you, you peaked. Comets, I don't know what to think about you. I think you're falling, actually. You're going to get this win, but uh, not much more. All right. Crusaders. Fun week coming up for you guys. You played. You got two games on the schedule. Only going to be playing one. Hmm. So, first off, you're going to play uh, the, Mar- the Marion County Crusaders. You're going to play the Little Piranhas. You're going to get a win. You're going to stay undefeated in BCFL play. But nobody wants to talk about that. Let's talk about the Marion County Crusaders, number one team in the BCFL, taking on the number one team in PAFL Tier 2, Canton Pitbulls. That's what I want to see. I talked last week, if you watched the show last week, I talked about how great it would be if I had a a, a tournament-style, a BCS-style show. It's for this. Yeah. What's happening this weekend is what I want to see. I wish I could get to Canton. I don't know how far that is. If I was going to Canton, I'd go to the NFL Hall of Fame. Sorry, Pitbulls. <coughs> Marion County Crusaders, the heart of Indianapolis now, taking on the number one team in the Tier 2 PAFL, Canton Pitbulls. I'm excited. I want to see everything I can about that game. I know what Marion County's got. Marion County's got probably the deepest line around. Oh. They got a yeah. mean defense. And they got a really good quarterback. They have a really good team. That yeah, really yeah, they're just all around good. They're and, a solid and team. They are the heart of Indy now. 
Canton Pitbulls. You're the number one team in the PAFL. I got y'all going far. I don't know as much about you as I do the Crusaders, but I hear you got a really good quarterback. You got probably the best uniforms in semi-pro locally. I'm excited about this game. Both teams are getting a win. Canton Pitbulls will get a forfeit win. The, Sa the Crusaders will get a forfeit win. I don't, I don't know, though. I don't know where, at the end of the day, when the dust settles, what's the difference between the best Pitbull, the best PAFL Tier 2, and what Marion County has. Yeah, and if somebody could go live on that game, that, that would be Well, I think, the, I think Canton awesome. does a really good job of airing their games out. I think they have like an actual channel. Okay. And I'm going to do everything I can to watch it. And if you got the link, send it to me. That's a game. That's the type of bowl game that yeah. I want to incorporate. That's the type of bowl game that I want to have here that I want to give a trophy to because that's top tier versus top tier. Yeah, this is like your March Madness. This is, yeah. this is what the NCAA gives you week one. When Florida State plays Alabama week one, this is it. It's going to be humbling for one of the two teams. Um, either way, I won't, when I do the rankings next week, a loss here won't drop you from that number one spot. Um uh, I gotta go pit bulls. I, I gotta go pit bulls. I, I don't know why, but it's at Canton. The Crusaders. I just imagine it's tough for teams to bring it. I'm going pit bulls. I think it'll be close. Twenty-two twenty. Who we got on? Uh, we have uh, Mario with the Crusaders. Actually, Mario, you get a minute, Mario, and you're being hung up on. What's going on? <laughs> Me Mario, you called in. Don't tell me you're getting cold feet on me now. What is going on? You get 60 seconds, don't waste it. Tell me why you're going to win this game Saturday. Yeah, why are you going to beat the Pit Bulls? Because, man, we got the chemistry. You know, we've been playing together for a long time now. So people, don't, people don't understand that. We've been playing together for years. I'm sure they have been, uh, too. Even the guys that come over, the guys that come over, the new guys, we've been playing together for years. You know, we're deep on the O-line, we're deep on the D-line. Great quarterback, great receivers. Not too many weaknesses. So, you know, we're going to have to go out and, and, and win this game and explore the pit bulls weaknesses. Just as well as they're going to try to score ours. But we're going to win, so I don't, I don't go with the prediction. Okay, well, give me a final score then. Final score is going to be 28-14. Uh, 28-14. All right, I'm going to hold you to that, Mario. And I'm being generous. I'm being generous because I really don't think they're going to score on us. Mm. I mean, okay. They're a couple offense. I mean, they're, they're the same as every Ohio team. You know, uh, athlete, quarterback. Trying to scramble and just try to make things happen and throw the ball in the air. We got a quarterback that can sit in the pocket and take you apart and run. They don't have that. There's not a quarterback around like our quarterback. And that's the truth. I, I do like Tanner Day. Yeah, he's special, man. Um, and the old minds, we love it. We love it. Every week we go out, we put our, we put our, you know, our back to the next on the line. We got to get up Monday, go to work. But, it don't matter. If I'm being touched, we ain't worried. We'll call in one day if we got you. All right. Well, uh, I got your, I got your, I got your generous score here, twenty-eight fourteen. I want you to call in next week, win or lose. I want you to own up to that, or I want you to live in your praise. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna call in. I don't remember, I don't remember how it's going. I'm gonna work on it. All right, man. Thank you for giving us a call. All right, all right, all right. Let me, let me tell you what Mario just did. I was sitting here real time making making fast thoughts just off the top of my head, and I said Canton's going to win. Mario changed my mind. Because of that, I'm saying Crusaders win 28-26. Anybody from Canton listening? Anybody part of the PAFL want to call in and change my mind? 
It's flexible right now. It's soft. It's it's, it's settling. I I like their line. I like their mobile quarterback. If their defense knows what's coming up, yeah. Right now I'm 28-26 Canton or uh, Marion County. Let me know. Let me uh let me jump let me jump in on that real quick. He is uh keeps saying that the team has chemistry. Uh, the Canton has to have chemistry as well. I mean they're number one in the P in the PAFL tier two. Uh, I mean, I'm not even. That's no joke. I mean, like they got to have some type of chemistry, team building, et cetera. You know, I mean, it's going to be a close game. Uh, right. No, I, yeah, I'm. But. I, I'm there. I, I, my my thing isn't the chemistry at all. My thing is, I just look at everything else, and I think the Crusaders have a lot of pieces. Oh yeah. And I will flip back on this before I make a final decision. Right now, I'm going 28-26 Crusaders. Um, that wraps up the BCFL. My championship game, Marion County Crusaders, West Portsmouth Tanks. Well, you got the tanks Flip, flipping it up on us. I take – but I take Crusaders winning. Oh, easily. That'll be a great game. I just think – I just think the tanks are – tanks. the tanks are your hometown team. The tanks are that Friday night football team. The tanks are the team – that you close down your local small town and you go home and, and or you, you go to the game and you watch this, you watch old man Smith's quarterback play. That's the tanks. So the Crusaders this year are your private school. The Crusaders are Indy super team. Oh, yeah. I mean, folding of the, of the tornadoes and, and everybody else, yeah. The tanks, it's probably going to be 14-14 at halftime. Crusaders run away with it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll call it better when the game comes. I may be way off. But right now, my prediction, if I had a prediction for this BCFL championship game, it would be West Portsmouth Tanks falling to the Marion County Crusaders. Moving on to the GDFL, continue to call in. The number's at the bottom of the screen. Look, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on the GDFL, A, because I don't feel like we really reached that market. I see a lot of Erie Express. I see a lot of Lexington. Lexington Red Dragons. We've even heard from the Central Ohio Calvary. But I, to have 24 teams with the folding of the Georgia Knights, I don't really reach that as much as I would like. I would love to reach the GDFL. They're a great league. They're a great team. Or well, they got great teams, at least at the top. But it's just hard to cover because I know what very little I know from the website. I read those articles. I process the stats. I, I see all this, and I say, hey, Team A beat Team B, so they must be better than Team C. But I don't have any more than that. So I'm going to run through some of these scores. I'm going to talk about what I know. If you know anything about the GDFL, if you have any questions, thoughts, opinions, so give us a call. So we do have some guys from the – it looks like from the Erie Express and the Cleveland Cobras in the chat. Okay, great. And the Lightning Bolts And the Lightning well. Bolts, that's great. That's what we need yeah. more of because I so. need to see what's going on. Yeah. So – we got Madison Generals taking on the Tri-County Outlaws. The Outlaws, I think, are, are essentially the Bulldogs' JV team, and they're going to take offense to that. I don't mean anything bad by it. The Generals just aren't just aren't that solid. They shocked me when they got a tie here recently. I, I just don't see the Generals winning. Outlaws going to win by quite a bit. Game of the week right here, Chattanooga Eagles taking on the Huntsville Rockets. Huntsville Rockets prove that they're truly number one. Shut down the GDFL. The rankings have been saying this forever. I was a little behind. I was still on that Bulldog train. The Rockets came through, won. Great game, I imagine. Eagles experienced a tough loss to the Bulldogs. Rockets still staying number one. Nothing changes here. Rockets going to continue to win. Eagles, I think, turn around. Eagles, I wouldn't be surprised to see a playoff run. But it's not here. Wait, like you had the Eagles as the third ranked team or the fourth ranked team? Um, I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head. They did just drop a game, so I think I dropped them number five. Like, are they from the same area as the uh, Huntsville team? Like, like are they all from that I, Mississippi? I, I dropped out of college, and I sure didn't do good in uh, geography. So I don't <laughs> know how far Chattanooga is from Huntsville, but I, I, it's probably within okay. the same general facility. So they're in Ch Ch Chattanooga. So yeah, it's probably an hour or two. Middle Tennessee Bulldogs, the number two team. Yes, they 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 lost a great game to the to the Rockets. I had them just drop to number two. Uh, they came off a solid win. I think they're still trying to find who they are, who this edition of the Middle Tennessee Bulldogs are. 
They came off a close win against the Alabama Sabres, won 12 nothing, lost by two points to the Rockets, and then came off about a nine-point win to the Chattanooga Eagles, a team they thrashed week one on the road. I think the dogs are still trying to find out who they are. They're playing the Tennessee Lightning Bolt. For those who don't remember or don't know, the Tennessee Lightning Bolts went to the Middle Tennessee Bulldogs with about 12 guys. It got caught at halftime, 49 to nothing. I think it's a little better this time. They're at home. They're prepared. Yeah, and uh, here in the chat, they're like they're actually calling that Bolts game the game of the week. Uh, I, I feel probably because they are at home and no, they I, said that there's I, two I teams that know each other. I wouldn't call it game of the week because, hey, you yeah. got, I got the Rockets and the Eagles right there. I, it's hard for me to call it game of the week when I have that going on. Well, yeah, I mean, like you have a top five matchup, it's hard not to call that the game of the week. But I just – what – my question is, how deep are the boats that when you travel to the road, you had 12 and you got thrashed, but now at home it's going to be a, 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 a that much of a game changer? I got the Bulldogs winning by 30. Georgia Crush versus the River City Pythons. I don't know much about either one of these teams. The Crush are pretty solid. They dropped back-to-back -back Rockets and Eagle games. The Pythons are, are a solid team. They just have one of the toughest schedules. They keep facing, hey, we're going to face a top-tier team, then we're going to lose. We take some, face a top-tier team, we come close to winning, but we still lose. It doesn't get any easier. Crush come away with an easy win. The Arkansas Steelers versus the Starkville Steel Dogs. Starkville Steel Dogs shocked me when they allowed to be tied with the Madison General, but I still say the Steel Dogs win. Oklahoma Outlaws versus the Missouri Cyclones. The Oklahoma Outlaws are confusing me, and they're giving me a headache. They come out, they say, hey, we're new. We beat Oklahoma Thunder, best team around. Then I start hearing Oklahoma Thunder didn't have everybody. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma Outlaws, they ho-hum around, win some games. Then they lose a game. Then they play the Thunder again, and I say, okay, this is it. This is the time that Oklahoma Amazing gets state. taken over. They beat the Thunder again. Not only have they beat the Thunder once, something that hadn't even happened in the last two years, they beat the Thunder again. So I don't know what's going on. The Cyclones, the Cyclones came out the gate blowing people out. Then they got blown out, and now they're struggling to get wins. Outlaw's going to win, though. Midwest Chargers taking the Oklahoma Thunder. Oklahoma Thunder's giving me an equally as big headache. Best team in the country. Team you don't play, mess with. Won the GDFL easily. Lost to the Outlaws twice. Against everyone else, dominating. Only giving up six points in every other game. Oklahoma Thunder, they can't get over the hump. Oklahoma Thunder beats the Chargers. West Virginia Smash versus the Central Ohio, or I'm sorry, the Buffalo Spartans. West Virginia Smash used to be the joke of the GDFL. Got beat 58-0. 70 to nothing, 70 to 6. Western, the Ironmen fold. Apparently, they pick up a quarterback and a kicker. Now, they're putting 55 on teams. Yeah, now, they're competing. They, they barely lost to the Red Dragons. They're playing a, a, um, a Buffalo Spartans team that has surprised me, come away with some wins. I think they're sitting at 3-1. and one. I think the Spartans are going to get this one, but it's going to be close. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, that uh, smash team really intrigues me. Like, I would like to be able to – just watch film from week one to well, week five. Just week to, one was hideous. I went to, to week what, three it was, or happened, week two yeah. or three. When they played the Red Dragons, it was it was god-awful. Yeah. They didn't have anything, and now they're somebody. Memphis Blast versus the Mississippi Road Warriors. I don't know. It's one of those teams that seem to change, like the stock market, up and then down. Road Warriors win, though. Now we're getting to some of the local teams. I'm going to dive in here. Central Ohio Calvary taking on the Lexington Red Dragons. I was so high on the Lexington Red Dragons. I went and I saw. They had a great field. They played at Paul Lawrence Dunbar in Lexington, Kentucky. It was great. They had a quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks I'd seen. He was flinging the ball everywhere. They dominated. They've struggled since. They lost a game. They won some games. But they haven't played as dominant as that time I watched. Well, and uh, I'm not for sure, but uh, I saw a receiver that played for the for the team here, like the indoor team, he's our quarterback now. See, like San Antonio, Antonio Wilson? Yeah. Now, like, I don't think he was quarterback. I saw that picture. That picture looked like he was picking up a, a bounced punt. Oh, okay. Now, somebody asked if he was playing quarterback, and he never answered, so I don't know. He might be. Yeah. But that was my thing. Lexington Red Dragons had two key pieces, one of the best quarterbacks I've ever seen, one of the best kickers I've ever seen. 
if you lose those or one of those or they go overseas or they go arena or they go to another team, it changes things. But let me let me take a quick, no pun intended, let me take a quick second to express the frustration, or not, I don't want to say frustration, but why I'm not really a fan of what the GDFL has done in the northern part. The South's down here kicking the crap out of each other. You got the River City Pythons and the Georgia Crush and the Chattanooga Eagles and the Huntsville Rockets all just beating up on each other. And up north, you got teams winning divisions already. Yeah. You go 5-1 and one and you win the division? I believe Lexington said they won the <laughs> Lexington and Erie Express yeah. both won the division. 5-0, and 4-1. Oh, and one. Yeah, in week six, you, you should not be able to clinch a division. Dominate it. Yeah. Lexington Red Dragons are going to beat the Central Ohio Calvary. It probably won't be a blowout. The Express versus the Cobras. This was supposed to be the game of the week not too long ago. The Cobras lost their quarterback. The Express keep thriving. Love the Express helmet. The way they go from that that chrome to that red to that blue. Yeah. They they seem to be very. Uh, they promote the crap out of their organization. They're very professional. They're they're very solid. I got them ranked number three in the GDFL. Some have them ranked higher. And they're the ch- cruising too easily. That's my concern with the Express. I would yeah. love to talk to somebody from the Express. They're cruising too easily. Yeah, I mean the chat They've is won filled, the division. filled with the Express players right now. So if you guys could chime in, that'd be fantastic. They're cruising too easily. They they won the division. It's wrapped up. It's theirs. Put it away. And uh, per the chat here, it says the Cobras are – they played the Express last year with the same team but only lost by six. But did you just not say that the Cobras lost their quarterback for the they season? They did, and then they played earlier in the season. I think they lost quite a bit. So they had We had their show on. They're, they're our host. So Alexander uh, trade Dave Davison. Uh, I'm not for sure what you're talking about there, bud. But uh, I don't either. Uh, unless so. I maybe I'm talking about the wrong team. I could have yeah. swore that the Cleveland Cobras were the one where we had the uh, the show on, the radio show. They said they, lost, they were a young team. Yeah. They lost their quarterback. That's well, what I was told. And then uh, Joey from the chat here just, just chimed in and says the Cobras didn't lose their quarterback. I'm just going by so. what I was told, man. Yeah. They said he so. lost their quarterback. The, uh, y'all lost quite a bit to the Express. The Buffalo Spartans beat you twice. I would hide behind that. If you didn't lose your quarterback, sure, should, you should say you did. Yeah. I love Airborne my back in here. And my love the passion, Airborne. Do something. Yeah, I need you to do something, man. All right, Co- Express Cobra. Let me tell you about the Express. I like the Express. I'm afraid the Express are on cruise control, and when they get their first challenge, they're going to fold. Not fold as an organization, but when it comes time to it, when it comes time to your starters playing forever or playing a full game, are you going to be able to do it? Yeah, they'll be getting popped in the mouth and like, what just happened? And Maybe. they'll back. I need to see more. I want to see more of the GDFL. My GDFL championship predictions, I'm riding on what I said. Got the Middle Tennessee Bulldogs taking on taking on the Oklahoma Thunder. I think the Thunder still have players dormant. I think the Thunder are like the Oklahoma or, or the Golden State Warriors. They get when you've won two and three league championships and you've captured national championships, you get bored. When you get bored, yeah, think the small things don't seem to matter as much. And what I mean when I say a small thing. First game of the regular season is a small thing when you win national championships. Yeah. The first road game or any road game in the regular season isn't important when you win championships. They're on cruise control until the time matters. When the playoff comes, I assure you they probably have guys overseas. Yeah. They probably have guys wrapping up arena. They may even have guys on practice squads. Mm -hmm. When the playoffs come, Oklahoma Thunder will be ready. I have the Oklahoma Thunder defending their championship. I'm sure to be wrong on it. Probably definitely will be, to be honest with you. And I'm not 100% how that bracket breaks down, but will the Bulldogs meet the Rockets in the well, championship Well, so game? from my understanding, and I, I've I've been t- I've talked this 100 times, and I don't have exact answers. would love to hear from somebody in the GDFL. From my understanding, it's like NFL. Okay. There's four division winners. Yep. And then two wild cards. The Rockets and the Bulldogs are in the same division. Okay. So one so play will be a, yeah. yeah. It's exactly. it's kind of like if um, the Chiefs and the, the the Chargers and the NFL both went fourteen and two. Only one's getting a bye week. Yeah. 
and the other one's got to be in the wild card because you both can't win the division. Correct. So, I mean, like, like I guess they could, in theory, meet in the conference championship. Game. Yeah, they could. Yeah. They could meet anywhere in the, in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think the Bulldogs would get them yeah. the next time around because the Bulldogs are tricky. And this isn't anything wrong, but yeah. much like the Oklahoma Thunder, I'm sure the Bulldogs got guys on their roster who are busy elsewhere right now. But when the playoffs come, I, there's often been a little, there's been a, like a secret, quote-unquote, rumor that Ricky has Albert Hainsworth for a game or two. I don't know if that's true. It's probably maybe not true. But how, I mean, just things like that. When the playoffs come, both these teams will be ready. Championship game, Oklahoma Outlaws, Middle Tennessee Bulldogs. I guess he's, uh, as long as he's on the roster, I guess it would be. Right, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. All right, moving on. Make sure you check those IDs. Hey, like I said, if they're on the (laughs) roster, I I would register everybody. Yeah. Especially if I was in Cincinnati, the way those guys hop around, I'd register everybody in the state, everybody in the city. Don't get me started on that since that. I mean, that just that just ear like that shows you semi pro players in that area have no loyalty to anybody. How they, they, they do? They like have how, loyalty to the ring and themselves. Well, yeah, I mean, but how they jump from team to team, like, hey, all uh, right, move. I may sign with the Colts, but I'm going to play with the Comets and Chiefs and whoever else next week. So, right? No, I, I certainly agree. Yeah. Moving on to the PAFL, we're going to ride out the show with the PAFL and all their mini teams. We have. From my understanding, there is no Tier 1 versus Tier 1 matchups. Hmm. Everything is Tier 1, Tier 2. So the funny thing about this is you get, much like the Crusaders and the Pitbulls, you have the Columbus Fire taking on the Butler County Broncos. Both teams are going to get a win via forfeit. Both teams will play each other. This won't have any account. This will not count in any way towards the playoffs and final standings. But it will be a a win slash loss. The fire are head and shoulders better than everyone. Everyone around. I got the fire one of the top two teams in the country. At least in this area. The Broncos, they got a nice offense. They got a nice little team. They look great in their all-blue uniform. I just see them struggling. I don't see – the Fire have only allowed six points in the regular season. You're going to have to score more than six to beat them. Oh, yeah. I mean, the the Fire, they are, I feel, is the best team in the area. Both teams yeah. going to get a win by their forfeits, but Fire's going to win that one. The Ohio Raiders taking on the Northeast Ohio Silverbacks. Uh, the Raiders got a big win over the Predators last week, and now they're going to play another Northeast Ohio team. The Silverbacks really been winning some games, had a s- tough start to the season, really been turning it around. Uh, for anybody who's trying to recap, we are back on. We are moved on to the PAFL. Raiders versus Silverbacks. Got the Raiders winning. They're going to continue their stride. I think this is the year. Their their commissioner is the commissioner of the BC or the PAFL is their owner. He's really been trying to. He seems to be a great guy. Really trying to piece everything together there. It looks like he might be onto something this year. Raiders beat the Silverback. We got bottom feeders Pittsburgh Rangers of Tier One taking on uh, Tier Two sweethearts Strabane Spartans. I said the Spartans were going to lose a couple more games than they did. Or they're I, I still say they're going to lose a couple games. Caught a lot of flack for that. They're going to win this one easy. Pitt Rangers, last I heard you, was looking for a quarterback, looking for a punter, looking for a kicker. Too late. Not a good time to be looking for those things. Not midseason. Detroit Seminoles taking on the Highland Park Polar Bears. Seminoles a good squad. They seem to be more defensive-minded than offensive-minded. I guess Highland Park is near is in Detroit. Oh, is it? I don't imagine Polar Bears are in Detroit, though. The Seminoles, I, I don't know as much about these teams. I wish I did. We, I, I always like getting calls in from the PAFL guys. I wish I'd get guys from these teams. They, the, the Polar Bears seem to have a great following throughout the week, but when the showtime comes, I don't hear from them. Seminoles, strong defense. They're going to win. The Lorraine County Nightmares taking on the Cleveland Patriots. Lorraine County struggled. Looked good on the field. Not on the scoreboard, though. Cleveland Patriots, they seem to be rebuilding. They seem to be a, a bottom team in tier two. In tier two, nightmare win. Southern Minis- Southern Michigan Timberwolves got you confused with the Minnesota Timberwolves. You, you're toying with me there. <laughs> Taking on the Michigan Hurricanes. 
Michigan Hurricanes, I really like them. They're getting better. They're one of the top three teams in Tier 2. But I just think that Timberwolf team's too nice, too deep. I like that. I like the Hurricanes. Like, like, I, like I saw some film on them earlier this, this week, and they just seem to be a solid, rounded team. Now, I don't know how, how deep they are. I only saw the first quarter. But they seem to be a solid team. So... They're, they are a solid team. They're going to compete. They're going to be a, a nice little runner-up somewhere along the tournament. SMT is just better. WPA Wildcats taking on the Cleveland Rams. WPA Wildcats for the last couple of years have been the gold standard of the PAFL. They're struggling this year. I don't know what happened to them. I don't know if they lost some of the pieces. Uh, they lost to the Predators in a controversial game. They barely beat the Raiders. They're playing the Cleveland Rams, who seem to be a really good, solid team in Tier 2. But I got the Wildcats pulling this out. 26-20, something like that. It, it, won't be, it won't be a blowout. Pittsburgh Saints versus the NEO Predators. Saints are, are a nice, solid. They uh, blew out 20 or 10, 10, I hate what to call it. They 20 to nothing over the Mon Valley Predator or what is their name? The, whatever Mon Valley is. I'm, I'm Sabres. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, Getting yeah. all these teams run together. The Mon Valley Sabres of the T3. Probably the most hated team in the PAFL. I wish I knew why. Yeah, if you guys got some insight on that, we would we would love to hear their history of why they are why they are the Kevin Durant of the PAFL. Well, so we got Pitt Saints taking on the NEO Predators. NEO Predators came off a seven six loss to the Raiders. I think they bounced back with a nice win over the Saints this week. Moving on to primarily tier two team tier two games we have this week. Uh, let me give my rundown. Championship game. I'm just trying to start including this just so I can see how uh, how far off I am and just to see if I can motivate. Tier 1 championship game is going to be Detroit Seminoles losing to the Columbus Fire. I don't think Columbus Fire is going to lose at all this year. I think they're going down to Florida to win a national championship. Columbus War, Eater, War Eagles taking on the Ohio Valley Saints. I like the War Eagles in this one. They got drummed. They got blasted. By the fire last week. It was 30 nothing at halftime. So, not to cut you off, but uh, per per the chat here, it looks like uh, the uh, Sabres are a hated team. Simply just because they, they like to run their mouths a lot. Which, I mean... Well, isn't that, that was, everybody? I, as, isn't that and, every team? And semi-pro, yes, but... Isn't that the Canes? Isn't that uh, the Titans, Bulldogs? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the Bulldogs back it up, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I mean, uh, so... I'll save that when I get to I'll get to the Sabres game. I don't I don't want to spend too much time on here. Uh, the Ohio Crush going to get a forfeit win. Cincinnati Chiefs versus the Lima Steam. Chiefs shocked me. The way you the way you beat Butler County, the way beat you em. beat the Dayton Hornets the first time around, shocked me losing to them the second time. Well, I've I've heard some rumors that the Chiefs have lost a lot of players to the Blaze. So, like, I don't know how true that is or what. Why? Hey, you have a great job at Apple. Why don't you go work at Spectrum? Hey, it makes sense. No, there's certain, <laughs> there's certain levels. Yes, there's not maybe, maybe, or maybe team-wise on the field, there's not that big of a difference. But the Columbus Fire and the Columbus Eagles are two different companies. Oh, yeah. One's Mountain Dew, one's Mountain Lightning. The, the Cincinnati Chiefs, that's Dr. Pepper. That man's got his Ph.D. Doctor. The Southern Ohio Blaze, good organization. That's Mr. Piv. That's just a guy. Come on, man. Go back to Cincinnati. Go back to the Chiefs. That's a nice squad. I mean, like, like uh, I don't want to take that as anybody taking that as a fact. That is just what I've heard and kind of. Oh, no, it's out on the Internet. It's yeah, facts. Yeah, 100% facts. Wikipedia. They're going to blast the steam. Pit bulls, we discussed. They got a, they get a forfeit. I'm still on the fence, and I haven't heard anything. I saw some people trying to talk that Canton Pit Bulls are going to blow out the Crusaders. I don't know why. I like I like the Crusaders' offense. I'm still iffy. It's it, it's going to be a close game either way. I like Marion County's line. I like Marion County's quarterback. I like Marion County's defense. I like Canton's quarterback though. I like Canton's uniforms. Nice red chrome helmets with a dog on it. Can't complain. And I would like to just, like, re reiterate of what we said, said earlier. It, like, if you guys got film of your team, send them to us so we can 
watch this film and learn about your team more just so we can make a better educated guess rankings etc so as I mean like i want to pick pick the canton team simply because they're ranked one uh they got the good quarterback but i still got mary count and winning 28 26 call in change my that, mind but other than that we don't know much about them because you know we're not from canton ohio so be sure to s- send us some film of any any games you guys got so and, looks like the coach of the blaze says not so fast my friend not so That's fast all right uh long trip hey i think that trip's gonna take an effect i just think because of everything that's happening in Indianapolis. Tornado's gone. Braves gone. All these big organizations gone. Outlaws gone. That town had to go somewhere. Apparently, there's a team in there I don't know about. The Thunder or something. Mm-hmm. Get them out of there. I think they're the Northern Indiana Warriors. Warriors, yeah. Nothing. I ain't got time for that. The Assassins, they don't look that good. That means they all had to go to the Outlaw or the uh, Crusaders. I think depth's going to come out. The One of the bottom teams... In tier two, gets a forfeit win. The Ohio Gladiators, Hornets versus the Ohio Rage. Dayton count. Dayton's got their NFL receiver. Going to beat the Rage pretty easy. Which we still don't know why he's not playing quarterback for them. I mean, yeah. I mean, I get it. Yeah, we've talked about this. You got an NFL guy. His athleticism, his speed is just going to be better than anyone else's. Yeah. But if he's trying to get back to that level, if he's trying to get back to what he's trying to do. Receivers is going to be it. And if they got a legitimate quarterback option. <laughs> Summit County Storm taking on the Tri-County Crusaders. Storm good, Crusaders not. Storm win easy. Westmoreland Wolves coming off a, a close loss to the Pit Bulls. Taking on the Iron City Legends. I think the Wolves bounce back nicely. My Tier 2 championship game. Still going to go Chiefs. Still going to go Chiefs Pit Bulls. Still got them, huh? Chiefs pit bulls still gonna go there, and 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 I like to correct myself on the Chiefs thing. They're they're apparently that they're going to the fire, not the. Blaze. Okay, now that makes yeah, more I'm, sense. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Now about you're that. moving up. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. But once again, we talked about this last week. How long does that last? You go to the Chiefs. You're the Chiefs. You're the Chiefs' wide receiver. Mm-hmm. The wide receiver. You're, you're the wide receiver, or whatever. Maybe a backup. Maybe a second wide receiver, second safety, whatever it may be. But you're still getting time. You're getting time. You're going to win. Your team loses, your team struggles, you're getting a little disheartened. So you go to Columbus, and now you're on the pine. Yeah. You're going to go back. You're going to go back. And you're driving. I just don't see how, I just don't see how their teammates deal with that. If I got to look at you, and, or, and, and you left me to go celebrate, and then when the going got tough, you came back just on the coattails of us winning? I'm not for it. Uh, OG I would, says cha- the Canes in the championship game. Nah, I think the Pit Bulls upset them. I, I would say. Not Pit Bulls. Uh, us, us, uh, us coming from a team that we're loyal to. Uh, Cincinnati does, doesn't seem to have that have that team. So their teammates might be like, hey, come on back, buddy. We're here to win it. I guess. But, I, I mean, guess. And I guess when you're just that, I guess you're just used to it. You're yeah. just used to that all bouncing around. Diving into T3. We have the Marion Titans versus the Lima Warriors. I like the Lima Warriors winning it easily. The East Pit Storm taking on the Tri-County Phoenix. Phoenix going to take that win easily. The Mon Val- the most hated Mon Valley Sabres taking on the West Virginia Ironmen. Ironmen are no more. Sabres going to get that win. And the Southern Ohio Blaze, the Mr. Pibb of the T3 as we talk, <laughs> they get a forfeit win. So, uh, like I meant to chime in on this real quick, Josh, Josh Thompson in the uh, chat room says that the PFL rosters are now locked. But if you're already yeah, on, if you're already on a roster, now, my, my question exactly. is, Billy Cole, any of y'all, can you be on? In, in theory, could I be on the Chiefs, Fire, and Blaze roster all at the same time? T1, T2, considering T3. they're in different tiers, how does that work? Do I have to pull out and bounce off? Do I have to be released? Do owners try to block the release, or can I just be on three and just be like, I'm going to win three rings? Game of Tier 3, River City Buccaneers, West Virginia Storm. My man Billy Coe versus my man Michael Payne. Billy Coe talks a lot of smack. I like the man. And he's on the line right now. Billy, speak of the devil and he shall appear. Can you hear us, Billy? I just get a no, I assume. What's going on, man? 
All right, so uh, I, I think I got my question. You can't be on multiple tier teams, can you? Um, no, you can't. Um, PAFO contract, not PAFO contract. They All right. Run, they run tier one to tier three, and you're stuck on whatever team you're on. All right, I, I was just curious. I was just curious about that because you could probably bounce all over the place if so. So, hey, somebody just said Buccaneers beating y'all by two touchdowns. Hey, hold up. Look, we, we, we need to have this conversation. This is kind of our life. Um, so, never mind. I, I'm not, I'm not going to say that. No, no, no. Yeah. You got to feed us, Papa Bird. You done got us interested. No, 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 I, I was going to go a little off with it. Let me just put it this way. Um, with some recent breaking news in the PAFL in Tier 3. Uh, Let's have it. Jesus, Jesus Christ doesn't have a cornerback for the wide receiver that I'm about to play Saturday. I need a name. Who do you got? Where's he from? Where did, he, did he play college ball? Yes, he did. For where? West Virginia State. West Virginia State. Is he big? Played recently. Played arena ball for fuck I can't remember. He, he's an older guy. He's probably thirty four. He he's he's on he's good. Right. So you have a thirty four receiver, thirty four year old receiver, that's gonna chew up River City Buccaneers secondary. Uh, that's pretty much what I said. Then, <laughs> if, if we play like you know let me put it this way. If we show up Saturday with 75% of our roster. That game's not staying within three possessions. You heard it heard. Okay. Um, now, it's funny because I don't know if he's still on the team, but the Buccaneers last year when they were in the MSFA had a cornerback that had to be 50. Are you going to match those two up? Hey, that's... They can match up whoever they want. They're <laughs> double teams. Yeah. They, they know who he is. Kenny Davis. They know who he is. Kenny Davis. That's his name? Let's see what Google has for me. All right. While, while I'm looking this up. Yeah, I, I got a question for you real fast here. So you're saying that the PFL rosters are locked and they can't jump teams. What happens if they already signed with, say, a player signed with the Chiefs and they signed with the Fire as well? Um, how does that work out since you're technically signed with two different teams? I don't know. They're going to take that up with Jermaine. From my understanding, if you're signed with Team A that's in PAFL Tier 1, if you want to go to Team B that's in PAFL Tier 3, that's, you, you've got to get a release somehow. But since it's past the signing deadline, you're pretty much SOL. Right. So, do hey, I got a question. I got a question. Has anybody heard from the Mon Valley Fighting Mosley this week? The Mon Valley what? Fighting Mosley. Fighting Mosley. Are you talking about the Sabres? They are preparing for their trip to Nationals, sir. They're undefeated, never lost. Undefeated in what, this week? Tier three. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> undefeated, never lost. I'm not looking at that. These guys are four and four and just put up a new set. I've been telling you all year they have no offense. So. On the one game, they put up 20 points. So let's make this interesting. Billy, what if they win tier three? If a frog had wings, it wouldn't pump it back. No, but but that's the thing. A frog doesn't have wings, and a frog's not going to develop wings. There's a chance they can win tier three because it, it, it they're just still winning. It doesn't ha- it didn't hurt that one of their teams in their division folded or got booted, but folded. No, don't exist any longer. The Rough Riders, they don't they what? They're not, they're not going to lose. They're going to play in the championship game unless they have a major match. Right, because they have the easiest road. I mean, th- their division got incredibly easy with the loss of the Ironmen. That's, that other division, I don't, I don't know what they're all called, but it is horrible with the Phoenix, right? The Phoenix and the, the Storm? Yeah, the Pitney Storm and the Phoenix. Yeah, the, they're going to win that with ease. While on the other hand, we got you on the other side. You're going to have to play the Warriors. The Blaze, the Buccaneers. There's a chance that your first round game could be against the Buccaneers, which I think you will beat them quite easily. 
But it's it, it's still a tough game, tougher than what they're dealing with over there. Do I think we're better? Of course, I'm not going to say that we're not. But it's tough to beat a, three, a team three times in one season. Uh, basically, this point forward, and I'm not afraid of this. I'm a Lima Warriors fan right now. We need Lima to beat the Blades. Ain't nobody trying to go play in Cincinnati with some bullshit rep. I agree. I agree. No, I mean, and, and the problem is, what do you do? Because I've heard rumors that some of the dudes from the Comets played for the Blaze. I heard rumors that some of the dudes from the Colts played for the Blaze, which I know the Colts haven't even come close to sniffing a win, so it doesn't mean anything. But the fact is, that's depth. That's extra bodies getting smacked on special teams while their starters are over there chilling. Something that I don't know if you guys have. I mean, do you guys have the luxury of going and scooping up some guys from the Smash if you so choose? I don't I don't think so. That. No, we would be stupid to say that we didn't benefit from the lightning having down here. Um, right. We've got we've got quite a few of probably say quite a few. This season and Michael Dickerson is an ex lightning player, came on with ownership of the storm this year and a couple of the guys who have been lifelong football friends came over with him. This was the heart and soul of the team, pretty much the of the veterans that I say, not the heart and soul. And some of these other guys seem the energy and stuff that we have going on over here. So, guys like Frankfurt here and Andrew Bishop and uh, Corey Simmons, Michael Savila, uh, some of the really good young players have came over. Gabe Davis. Gabe, Gabe really did one of your names, and Fred are probably the two names I get used to hearing in the two three real soon. Uh, we, we've got depth. We, we picked up. We actually picked up the gal from the comic. Hmm. Um, we, we've got depth. We're All right. 55 deep. Championship game. Blaze versus Sabres. What's your thoughts? I'm not going to speak on something that ain't going to happen. So the Blaze aren't going to be in the championship game. We just we just gained agreement that the Sabers are there. They're locked in. It's a, it's a smooth ride. Yeah. It's... Are, are are the Blaze is what we're are they, is that what we're doubting? Any given Saturday, something can happen. Now now, Billy, I got a Billy, I got a I got immense respect for you, but you really close to sounding like little buddy from the Gladiators last week. <laughs> You really close to saying one pan at a time, and then get beat by twenty, and then choke. Now I, I, I have, like I said, I have immense respect for you and your knowledge from that area and this entire team, and I will take you. I will let you take me as far as you can. But let, let, me, put it, let me put it like this: I know the Blaze got talent. The Blaze lost one of the good linemen in this past week. Blaze has got a couple other guys playing on their line offensively that I've played against before that. I ain't going to speak on what they have. I was going to tell you that I've got eight deep across my front seven. So my front four on the defensive line. My, my one and two are ex decent solid players or better. I'm not concerned with what they have. They're going to have to stop this year. Um, if we get in the 50, obviously we're playing 15 on, on 11. We've been there, we've done that. Went there in 2014, put in the West Bowl. We, we know how they get in. If Lama can take care of business for us, and they have to travel here, it's us and the Sabres, and we're taking shit down their throat. All right, I, I, I will give you that. Convince me. Convince me why I should go with the Pit Bulls over the Crusaders. I can't commit you with something that I don't believe. So you don't think the Pit Bulls are beating the Crusaders? I think it's going to be a real close game. But I really think the Crusaders, if they travel well, I think the Crusaders pull it out. The Pit Bulls are good. The Wolves are good. The Wolves are a very good team. I've played Brian and his team before. Um, I was shocked that the Pit Bulls beat the Wolves with the addition that they've made. Um, the Pit Bulls are not... Somebody spoke on chemistry earlier. The Pitbulls are not as 
an experience for people make things. They, uh, they're a combination of a couple teams with a really good ownership stuff that's doing a lot of good things for the Pitbulls up there. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked to see the Pitbulls win, but I really think the Crusaders are going to pull it out. I think the Crusaders, they're, they're very similar to the Pitbulls in their smash mouth style, but I, I, the difference is if, if the Crusaders rally and play well and make them throw, like you said earlier, it's, it's the difference between a pocket quarterback that has the ability to scramble and an athlete playing a quarterback that has the ability to scramble. All right, well, you convinced me. It's 28-26 of what I'm rolling with. Uh, let me, let me, let's recap on a couple of things I said. I want your thoughts. If the championship game was the Pit Bulls versus the Chiefs in Tier 2, who do you got? Where's it at? Uh, do, now, how does that work? Is there a neutral site for the championship game, or does the best team host it? I think if there's a neutral site, I think it's closer towards Canton. So if, um, yeah, closer to Canton then. I think the Chiefs are too athletic for them. If the Chiefs can hold their composure and not make minimal mistakes, the Chiefs will win. In, in Tier 1, I said Seminoles championship game, Seminoles versus Fire. Is there anywhere where the Seminoles can beat the Fire? The Fire have to beat themselves. I don't think the Seminoles can beat them. Uh, GDFL, do you think uh, – are you familiar with them? Do you think Oklahoma Thunders are back? Mm, I'm a huge that, – that other – outlaws are making what? Yeah. Upsetting them twice. It's got me kind of – Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely – I'm baffled. Uh, BCFL, the Crusaders versus the Tanks, who do you got? Championship game. Um, the Crusaders, because of the way the BCFL is set up, this year it's the Western Conference, I guess is what you would call it, host the championship game because the East hosted it last year. The Tanks are going to have to travel to Crusaders, if that's the case. Yeah, that's I, – I hate that. That's, I don't think any team should host a championship game, but that's my opinion. Uh, BC or the MSFA, are we? Do we need to talk more about the Airborne, or do do you really even care? I have no clue who the hell they are. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Spartans over Airborne MSFA. Who do you going with? Um, I've only heard of the Spartans. I know the Comets were in the league with them a couple years ago. It seemed like with the Comets, and I think maybe the River City Hurricanes were about the only two teams in that league that were worth a damn. Um, Pretty much. For all these Airborne up. Pretty much, sir. All right, man. I thank you for taking time out and giving us a call. Look forward to speaking to you next week. Yes, sir. All right, go Sabres. All right, thank you, Billy Cole, for calling in. we got a couple more minutes left on the show. Kind of went through everything. If you got something you want to talk about, now's your chance. Give us a call. you got the floor. If not, they're going to hold true. Look forward. We, we, the way we kind of run down with things. we got the show on Wednesday night. I'm going to post more predictions, more detailed predictions throughout the rest of the week. Sunday comes the recap. Monday comes rankings. Check them out. I want to know your thoughts on them. Because we're coming down to crunch time. Not really a lot of flexibility. MSFA, probably three teams. Out of the ten, eight, only three teams, championship contenders. BCFL, three teams, championship contenders. GDFL, they probably give me eight. Tier one, it's a one-man show. Columbus one. Fire. Tier two, I'll give you three. Hornets, Chiefs, Pit Bulls. I need to see more from the Canes. Tier three. And I'd like to really know what happened, what happened to the Chiefs. Like, what exactly did happen to them? I, I, I just think maybe yeah. maybe, maybe, instead of, maybe instead of saying, what, hey, what happened to the Chiefs, What ha maybe the Hornets just improved. Yeah. I mean, maybe they picked up some guy from the uh, teams that have been folding the last few weeks. I mean, maybe they just was missing some guys in the first round, or or maybe it was just a game that the final score wasn't indicative of the actual what happened. Oh yeah. Maybe it was just it was a close game, a couple pick sixes, a couple of balls bouncing the one way or the other, yep. and, and they got a big win. Tier three. Hey, I've been catching flack since this week one, since day one, since the day I started covering tier three. Mon Valley Sabers, you're in the championship game. You're already there. Smooth smooth ride. You've lost three times beforehand. You lost last week to the Saints. I don't care. You're undefeated in Tier 3. Keep it that way. David Mosley, whatever your name is, keep doing what you're doing. You're getting to the championship game. you got to win one game either against the Storm. It'll probably either the Storm, Blaze, or Warriors. 
Storm or Blaze if I was a betting man. And Storm's where my heart's telling Or the Blaze is where my heart's telling me. Billy says he's got some guys. We'll have to see. Storm's a lot like the Hurricane. Haven't played a lot. Keep getting forfeits and, and folds. But the Sabres, that's you guys. I got y'all winning this all. Winning it all. Any calls or anything coming in? We're going to wrap it up. If not, like I said, this is your opportunity. Yeah, you wanna... we'll, like, we'll, like, we'll keep the phone lines open for another five or six minutes or so. If you got, you can talk about anything. MSFA, BCFL, GDFL, PFL, PAFL, my bad. Because I'm being honest. Yes. All teams are not created equal. All teams do not get the same shine. When you turn on the NFL network, they may approach, they may talk about all 20, 32 teams, but they all don't get the same amount of time. Cowboys, Pittsburgh, Patriots. Then over here you got Browns, Bills, other teams, Jets. That's how this is. If you want me to talk about you, I need something to jump out about you. If you really want to be talked about, put a bounty out. We'll make a whole show about it. Fitted out Put bigger money on it. <laughs> Sorry, Airborne. I need to see more. I need I need to see more than number 17. Man carries the ball and stops ball carriers. And just to uh, jump on the uh, schedule that um, Matthew just released here, we will not have a show July 4th, so just keep that in mind. Yeah, there'll uh, be no July 4th show. Just I don't know what I'll be doing. Be blowing off some hands or limbs or something. I can't afford no fingers. I'm already broke two and missing two. You could be like that uh, JJP or from the Giants. Pierre Paul? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> All right, well, it's been a great show. We'll give them a couple more minutes. If anything, anything that's on your mind, Mike? Uh, No, just, just to remind you guys, uh, we're going to start doing uh, this live stream off of YouTube here probably in the next week or two. So just be sure to go over to the uh, RTF production uh, YouTube page. Subscribe to that. Click on the bell. And every time we upload the rankings and we go live, you'll get a little bell saying, hey, we're live. So and, sure and I want to take that. that opportunity. Well, I mean, I'm in the, the – Mike's, Mike's be with me, and he'll be doing his own thing with RTF. I'm in the transition of changing Crosstalk. You may see Crosstalk's name change. Only thing is Crosstalk's already taken. Crosstalk's copyrighted uh, by another – person that's not me clearly i believe uh, it's political stuff it too, is a political well. yeah. crossfire uh, that entire thing uh, i'll be changing the name some things uh, i'm also going to be incorporating some other shows guys i see y'all talk like crazy on the trash talk pages but you get on the show and you struggle to form thoughts you, you struggle to stay in one area I, I would like to start talking as the season continues i would start to like i would like to have a debate show I would like somebody to come in and let's get intense. Let's, let's start talking about something that you're passionate about. I might have to get the airborne on here. Yeah, and uh, let's get some UK fans and some U. Some I, I, fans in I here. would love to start doing a UK U of L debate show. And when when semi pro is all wrapped up, I'd like to do an NFL show. Yeah, and I and I broadcast this to uh, all over the places. Love to have people on. Got any caller? Or are we good? Uh, no. There's somebody keeps trying to call, but uh, they must they must have that cricket phone. Something. Yeah, we don't need no cricket. Yeah. Verizon or AT&T only. All right, well, that is it for Crosstalk this week. Stay tuned. We'll be blasting all kinds of rankings and everything throughout the week, trying to have more content, breaking down uh, best offenses, best defenses, top players in each league. Thank you.